I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Would you like to have a seat? A very warm welcome to our service today in Fakenham Parish Church. My name is Reverend Tracy Jessup and it's my privilege to be able to lead this service for Yvonne today. So a very warm welcome to you that are here, those who may be joining us on a live stream anywhere around the world or catching up later. I know that this will be a difficult day, but we've joined together to remember and to say farewell to Yvonne Annie Davidson, who was much loved. Karen and Justin, and indeed all of the family, will be comforted, I know, to see you here today from so many aspects of Yvonne's life. And we'll hear a little bit about that life in a while. It's very natural that today you do feel sad. Today is a day of mixed emotions, sadness and grief, but there should also be joy and thankfulness for the time that you had with Yvonne, for the precious memories that you have of her. And those tears come from a place of love because it is love that makes us grieve. And so it's perfectly natural if you wish to shed a tear today, and I encourage you to do that because it will help you along your journey of your life as we say goodbye. And so let us pray. We meet in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father. Grace and mercy be with you all. We have come together today to remember before God, dear Yvonne, to give thanks for her life, and to commend her to God, our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. God of all consolation, your son Jesus Christ was moved to tears at the grave of Lazarus, his friend. Look with compassion on your children in their loss and give to troubled hearts the light of hope and strengthen in us the gift of faith. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to have our first hymn now, which you'll find in your order of service. It's the Lord's my shepherd. Would you like to stand?
going to read some words um, that we'll put together by Karen about her mum and her life. So I share these with you now. Yvonne was a world's girl born into the Brody family in 1936. Her great loves were her family, her dogs and her garden. She was very proud of her Scottish heritage. And those of you who have been observant will already notice one or two Scottish elements to our service today. She was a staunch royalist and a generous woman with a wicked sense of humour. Yvonne faced much adversity in her life. In her calm and determined manner, she would pick herself up and start the process of reinventing herself. She was genuinely bewildered when her family called her a strong woman because she saw herself as weak. Yvonne was born before World War II, belonging to a generation who liked to do things properly and brought up with very little food or possessions. There was no jealousy because everyone was in the same boat. She hated to owe money, and she also had great trouble bringing herself to wear new clothes or use new gadgets, saving them for best. Perhaps that's why she loved to go around antique fairs, car boots and charity shops, finding little treasures. They didn't need to be perfect, as she was prepared to give things a second chance, saying that one man's rubbish is another man's treasure. Yvonne was a creative woman, and over the years she enjoyed many crafts such as patchwork, embroidery and tapestry. Her two nieces, Liz and Fran, still treasure the patchwork quilts that they watched her make for them as children, using offcuts of fabric from dresses that their mum Frida had made for them. And Yvonne had a great eye for colour. If she went she was sewing something and she went to a sewing shop to buy some thread. She'd look at the myriad of colours on display and she always knew the, sh the shade that she needed to choose, even without taking a sample of the material to match that thread against. Yvonne suffered ill health all of her life, but she did her best not to let that stop her. Her asthma was so severe that she was not expected to survive childhood. To build her up, she received extra meat rations during the war. That wasn't so great because she wasn't a meat eater. She'd be chastised for not eating her extra rations. She also had to lie in her only knickers and goggles under what was a revolutionary new UV ray lamp at the time for therapy in the hope that it would build her up. Due to her illness, she missed a lot of school, but it didn't matter. As a girl, she was, her lot in life was going to be to marry an agricultural labourer and have a large family. Losing her mum when she was just 14 left her helping to bring up her younger siblings, Roger and Jackie. And soon after, like many in North Norfolk, Yvonne went to work at the print works in Fakenham. It was now the 1950s and she was an adventurous young woman going up in the tiger moths at the airfield in Little Snorri. And at a time when very few people went on foreign holidays, Yvonne went to Paris and to Spain, although she wished afterwards that she hadn't gone to the bullfight. As an animal lover, she refused to watch natural history programmes because some animal would always be chased and eaten by another. Life changed when Yvonne met and married Terry Hook. She became an Air Force wife and went on to have her beloved daughter, Karen. The family were posted to Wiltshire, Germany, Colchester, Scotland and Cyprus. In the late 60s, Cyprus was a dangerous place to be. It was a war zone. Yvonne watched the American Air Force families being evacuated to Beirut, which was safer then. Living off base, 
She answered a knock on the door one day to be confronted by an Air Force officer. He instructed her to listen to a certain radio station and if she heard a particular coded message, she was immediately to go to the air base for evacuation. The officer reassured her that Karen would be collected from her school and that she would be at the base before Yvonne was. And after all of that, the officer told Yvonne to keep her stiff upper lip and remember that you're British. When Terry left the Air Force, the family moved to Surrey to be with his family and they ended up in Farnborough in Hampshire. Both Yvonne and Terry went to work for a local electronics company, Solatron, where Yvonne became a wire woman and later was promoted to a quality inspector. There was sadness in the mid-70s when Terry abandoned his family and after about a year never contacted them again. Yvonne was devastated and left as a single parent, but as was her quiet and determined way, she carried on. As a quality inspector, she became aware of a cocky Scottish subcontractor, an electronics engineer called Alan Davidson. Inspecting some of his work one day, she discovered that he had accidentally crossed a couple of wires. Rather than write him up with an official non-conformance note, she quietly advised him that he might want to redo some of his work. Alan was very grateful for this and thought she was such a nice lady that he asked her out. And much to Yvonne's surprise, she found herself saying yes. He was soon invited home and he met Karen and they immediately hit it off and particularly when Alan started to help Karen with her homework. The following year, Alan proposed, and this gave them both a second chance of happiness, and all three very quickly became a very happy family unit. Yvonne and Alan decided to change the direction of their life, and they moved to Norfolk, where they became the proprietors of Ciderstone Stores and the Post Office. And after improving the store, another change of direction took them to the county of Devon. Work in Devon proved difficult to find for Alan, particularly after his contract with the GPO ended, but he was easily able to find work down south again. So they moved back to Farnborough to move in with Karen. And then Norfolk called again. They moved and found a house in Cromer, which needed doing up necessitating working down south during the week and then commuting to Cromer at weekends to do it up. But eventually they were able to move to Cromer and then later to High Kelling. Tragedy struck in 1999 when aged 60, Alan died of lung cancer. A devastated Yvonne had to reinvent herself again. She moved to Fakenham where her sister June lived and she took up her lessons in patchwork and art and computer studies at various times. She threw herself into another love, doing up her new home and garden, and she joined a local exercise class, as well as wives, a local ladies' club. And I know there's lots of you here today. Being an ex print works girl, she enjoyed nothing more than on market day, bumping into friends from the old days and having a good old chat. Twelve years ago, Karen and her husband Justin, who live in Lancashire, bought a Norfolk business. Yvonne was delighted that she would see much more of them, and she invited them to live with her during the week and when they had commuted down to Norfolk. This proved a great help to her, particularly after a severe heart attack eight years ago, which left her with heart failure. Being the incredibly strong woman that she was, she did her best to pick herself up again and was able to get out and about and see her friends for a few more years. Although she didn't catch COVID, the pandemic took its toll on Yvonne and she never really recovered back to those pre-pandemic days. As her health declined, she wasn't able to get out much, but she had her beloved Chihuahua Kiki and really appreciated the friends and the family who stayed in close contact and did so much for her. 
a special mention goes to nephew Nigel and her niece Sarah. If Yvonne could leave one message to us all today, Karen says it would be the importance of family and friends and of not drifting apart. Now I'm going to ask my colleague Alison to come and read a Bible passage for us. It's from Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is with mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. At this point of a few more sermons, we have something called the Address. That's when I talk a little bit about the scripture reading that you've just heard. I always like to think that I can tie it into the life of the person who we're remembering. And today we remember Yvonne. And as I listened to Karen and Justin a week or so ago, as they were talking to me about Yvonne, and then when I read Yvonne's eulogy, the thing that kept coming back to me was this reinvention of Yvonne's life and the many roles that she had through it. And I couldn't get the line out of my head, all the world's a stage. I suspect that may sound familiar to some of you. It's actually a line from Shakespeare's As You Like It. But I think it speaks into the different phases we have in our life. So I'm using a bit of an acting metaphor for my address today. I thought that would be helpful. We have many scenes in our life many different roles that we play. But at the end, the play reaches its conclusion, an actor makes their exit, and the stage is empty, and the curtain comes down, and it appears that everything is over. That's what happens when we go to the theatre, the end of the show. And that's also what it might look like at the end of a life. A story is completed, it's very much enjoyed, but it's past, or so it seems. Christian faith sees it differently. The life we live here possesses eternal significance, yet it's a dress rehearsal. It's a preparation for something to come that's far more splendid. So after many scenes, the play of our life reaches its conclusion. It appears everything's over, but the curtain will rise again because that's when the real showtime awaits us. Why do Christians believe that? Well, it's because they've seen it. The Christian community today, the Christian community that I belong to and all those who are believers, are ancestors of the early church who witnessed Jesus Christ alive again after his death, his death on a cross and his burial in a tomb. That's the witness of the apostles, the faith of the church, and that's the hope that we have in our church. 
We don't view the resurrection of Jesus Christ as an isolated incident, just the same as none of us would see one flower in spring and think that's it, the summer's gone, because we know it's the promise of things to come. We don't see death as a final curtain, but as an end, if you like, to the dress rehearsal of life. And we view this life and all that's happened in it, tragedy, comedy, romance, thrills, but we recognise that all of that wrapped up together, all of that life experience, is something that we take with us into eternity. And we have Easter, of course, which is the promise that we know there is more to come. And each of us plays a part in our play of life. We're all members, if you like, of the cast. Yvonne had a unique role. You do too. The dress rehearsal we have, we don't know how long it's going to be. And it won't come without challenges, of course. Yvonne learned her part really well. In fact, she learned many parts. And she brought joy to so many hearts including all of you here today, or watching at home. When the curtain finally does go down on our long dress rehearsal, it will rise again, and it marks the start of the next grand production. We haven't seen the next production, but we may have heard rumours about it, of this new heaven and this new earth. And the central character the one reliable source in that play, if you like, is God, seated on the throne, and at one moment he shouts out, See, I am making all things new. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. This same God that raised Jesus from the dead is the one that starts those new things. Because God is making all things new, welcoming Yvonne and later me and you to life eternal, to a grand stage, so that we may take our part there in which everyone will be a star. Amen. next hymn is He Who Would Valiant Be. And whilst you're singing, I encourage you to think She Who Would Valiant Be, because it's a perfect song, a perfect hymn for Yvonne. Would you like to stand?
Merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God of mercy and Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for Yvonne, for the grace and mercy she received from you, for all that was good in her life, and for the memories we treasure today. We pause for a moment to remember those we love but can no longer see, all those who have joined the company of heaven. And we especially remember Alan today. Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom, where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Amen. And we pray for you. Your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on all who mourn. We pray for Karen and for Justin for all the family and friends, those here with us today, and those farther away. Give us all patient faith in times of darkness. Strengthen us with the knowledge of your love. As we remember Yvonne, we commend her to your keeping. Hold before us our beginning and our ending, the dust from which we come and the death to which we move, with a firm hope in your eternal love and purposes for us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And bringing all our prayers together, I invite you to join me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We come now to the time where we commend Yvonne to the mercy of God, our Maker and our Redeemer. Would you like to stand? Yvonne Annie Davidson, go forth from this world in the love of God the Father who created you and the mercy of Jesus Christ who created you, in the power of the Holy Spirit, who strengthens you. May the heavenly host sustain you and the company of heaven enfold you, in communion with all the faithful. May you dwell this day and evermore in peace. Amen. We'll shortly be leaving church, but um, please do join Karen and Justin uh, queues just over the way. If anyone needs directions, please ask us. We'll be happy to point you in the right direction. A final prayer for you. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, surround the family and friends of Yvonne with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet these days to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may God give you his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this day and always. Amen.